Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the A2J Author New User Workshop for today, October 2nd, 2014. My name is Alexander Rabinal, and I work for the Center for Access to Justice and Technology at IIT Chicago Kent College of Law. For those of you who have been here before, I know you're probably used to hearing Jessica's voice, but um, I'll be running through the next couple of sessions with you all as Jessica gets ready for maternity leave uh, next month. So congratulations to Jessica. Today, before we get started, just want to make a few reminders to you all. All of you are on mute. If you have a question, you can raise your hand or put a question in the question box. If you don't have a microphone, you can put your questions in the box as well. If you want to be heard by phone, enter the audio pin. And please note that this session is being recorded and will be posted to our A2J Author YouTube channel at youtube.com slash A2J Author. So today we're going to be talking about variable macros in 5.0. We'll run through what a variable macro is, how to insert a variable macro in A2J Author 5.0. We'll run through the various situations in which you can use a variable macro, and you'll see some of them there in question texts, in help answers, to include the value of a variable in a field label or a radio button, and in signposts. I'll also talk to you about where you can't use a variable macro We'll run through a brief demonstration of some of the features that we talked about today and go through some additional resources that you can access to learn more about variable macros. So what is a variable macro? Let's talk about that. A variable macro is a way to call up the value of a variable in a question text, learn more answer, or to include the value of a variable in a field label, radio button, or signpost. As you can see from the screenshot in the question text, it's personalized for the person who's going through the interview. You'll see that my name there is circled. And that's one of the, the benefits of using variable macros is it really allows you to, auth uh, to personalize the guided interview. So let's talk about how to insert a variable macro in A2J Author 5.0. You'll see that the uh, variable name is, uh, that's the format is double percent sign, open bracket, a variable name, and close bracket, double percent sign. You'll see that here in the question text editor, we, we're using that format and then asking our question. But please note that this format is used only in question texts and help answers and include the value of a variable in a field label or radio button. As you'll see later when we talk about signposts, uh, we, you don't have to use the double percent format. Again, those situations in which you can use a variable macro, question texts, text of a help answer, but not a learn more prompt, we'll talk about that in a bit, to include the value of a variable in a field label or radio button, or in signposts. So let's talk about how to use a variable macro in a question text. In this screenshot, you'll see on the top, you'll see the editor, and it has the variable macro format followed by the question. That outputs to the preview, which you'll see on the left side. You'll see that my name there is circled, and then it has the uh, question following. Again, this is a way to customize the guided interview, make it personal. You can also use a variable macro and a help answer. For those of you that are familiar with using A2J Author, you'll know that uh, when you're authoring a guided interview, you can insert um, help answers. Basically, it's a way for you to build in uh, answers to questions that may come up in a guided interview, sort of further furthering the interview for, for the person who's going through the, the guided interview. So if they have a question on something, they might learn more. And what pops up is a help answer. And the useful thing about the variable macro is that you can use it in a help answer, right? So here we've used it in the, in the help field. You'll see that the variable macro format is included, followed by an explanation. You can also use a variable macro and the value to include the value of a variable in a radio button. Here again, you'll see the editor. We've included the variable macro format 
for both fields for the radio button and the output is that the values of those variables show up um, as options for the radio buttons. Another great way to use uh, the variable macro is to include the value of a variable in a field label. Here in the editor, you can see that we're again using that format and it outputs to the value of that variable in the, the, field, the field label of the question which you're asking. Here you can also use uh, a variable macro in a signpost. So now I've included this uh, screenshot here of what that the script looks like. As I mentioned before, you're not going to be using the double percent sign uh, in the format, um, but I wanted to give you a preview of what this looks like. And when we run through the when we run through the demo, you'll see this in action uh, in the final slide in the final um, screen for the demo, and you'll see that the variable macro is in place for the signposts. So let's talk about where you can't use a variable macro. As I mentioned previously, you can't use a variable macro in a learn more prompt. In the screenshot that you see before you, you'll see that I'm attempting to use it. I'm attempting to use it by asking the question, why do, I, why do you need, and I'm using the variable, um, the agent variable there, why do you need their address as a learn more prompt? As you can see in the other screenshot, not, not so successful. Um, well, you'll see that in action as we go through the demo a little bit later. But do remember that you can use a variable macro and a help answer, right? So later you'll see that uh, when the person using the guided interview clicks on learn more, you'll see the variable macro in play in the help answer. Speaking of the demo, let's jump right into it. So for those of you who uh, haven't seen the A2J Author 5.0 interface, do remember that it is cloud-based. So you can access it by going onto your browser, logging onto a2jauthor.org, and clicking the Author tab. So here is a sample guided interview that I put together for today's training session. And we'll run through variable macros. And I also want to show you a, a cool new feature on A2J Author 5.0, uh, which is called the Fill feature. And we'll, we'll do that right now, actually. You'll see that the first question asks for the person's name. One of the great things about A2J 5.0 is, uh, A2J Author 5.0, is that you can, you can set values that have been pre-filled, and it'll populate the fields when you're running through a test or a demo. For those of you that test constantly your guided interviews, um, You'll know that each time you go through it, you'll have to go in and plug in all these uh, uh, values into the fields, and you have to type everything in. But the great thing about uh, A2J Author 5.0 is that you can already preset those values and simply hit fill. So we'll do that here. For please enter your name, I'm going to hit fill. And I've already set those values to my first and last name. I'll show you how to do this on the editor. You'll see that here. If you go to the field editor and sample value, I've set this sample value to my first name, and I've set this sample value for the field label last to my last name. So that's a really cool feature that you want to use when you're authoring your guided interviews. I'll go ahead and select male to populate the avatar. Right off the bat, you'll see that the variable macros are in play. The first question asks, what is the name of the first person you want to be your agent? You'll notice that it's using my first name, and that's all because of variable macros, which again, you can use in a question text. Again, I've already pre-filled this value with sample value, and I'll go ahead and click fill. We'll insert Jane Doe's name there, and we'll continue with the guided interview. Again, variable macros in play. Alexander, what is the name of the second person you want to be your agent? All because of variable macros here. I'll go ahead and hit fill, and we'll put John Smith's name in there. 
Okay, another way to use variable macros, as I mentioned before, is in a radio button. And you'll see here, the question is which of those people would you like to make your primary agent? These radio button options include the answers to the previous questions, and that, again, is all because of variable macros. We're using it in a radio button. I'll show you this on the back end here. If you go to the fields editor, you'll see that the radio button type is selected. And in the label, we're using that variable macros format, double percent sign, open bracket, variable name, close bracket, and double percent sign. We're doing that for both labels. Again, these are all great things that you can do using variable macros. Okay, so we'll go ahead and make Jane Doe the primary agent. Continue. Again, variable macros in play. You'll see that the uh, so you'll see that Jane Doe's name is used in the question text, and we're using the variable macro in the, the question text there. Um, and here's that little little quirk that I that I talked about earlier, where you can't use a variable macro in a learn more prompt. Here I've tried to use it, and what you'll see is that you don't get the value that you're looking for. You actually just get the format. But, as I mentioned before, if you select Learn More, there you go. You'll see that the variable macro indeed works. Jane Doe's name is inserted here in the help answer. And this is a good way to, to personalize, again, the interview um, in, in a way that really um, provides as much information to the person who's using the guided interview as possible. So we'll close that. I'll go ahead and use the fill feature again and continue. Here we have variable macros in play in the label of the field. Here Jane Doe's name again is used. In the question, describe the, um, in the uh, prompt, describe the legal powers you want your primary agent to have. Variable macros here, Jane Doe's legal powers. And we'll hit continue. And we've reached the end of the sample guided interview. As I mentioned before, you can use it in signposts and there you go. It has my, my name, congratulations, my name, as a way to really personalize and customize this guided interview. Um, I will show you how to do that by going back to this question. The script is actually in this, in the question immediately preceding the next step. So we'll show you how to do this. You saw this in the screenshot earlier, but I just want to review it again. Here's that advanced logic where we're not using the double percent sign for the signposts, but we are using the variable macros to call up that value. and fill that again so you can see it one more time and there we go the variable macros in the signpost so at this point I want to open it up for any questions that you might have uh, again we're always looking for feedback we're always looking for your questions and ways we can make uh, this experience really beneficial for you all so you'll see uh, Jessica's information there as well as mine if you have any further questions okay I'm not seeing any so we'll go on additional resources that you can access uh, you can learn more about variable macros in the A2J authoring guide, which is almost complete, and we will get that up on a2jauthor.org when it's all set. Um, you can also access some of our past trainings and presentations on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash A2J author. And there you'll find an archive of our old 4.0 presentations and all of the new presentations that we're putting together for 5.0. Uh, variable macros in 4.0 and 5.0 um, are pretty similar, so if you can, you can uh, go ahead and check out those videos uh, for, for 4.0 as well. Quick update on uh, something that we talked about last time. 
the 2014 Hill Innovating Justice Awards uh, were announced, the finalists were announced, and thanks to your support, ITJ Author was selected as a wildcard nominee. So we hope to have some good news um, in our next training session about that. But again, we just thank you so much for supporting ITJ Author uh, in these training sessions. We also want to thank Cali and GoToMeeting Services uh, for this webinar. If there are no other questions. Uh, this concludes the end of our training session. I'm not seeing any. So uh, we're all done. Have a great day. Thank you very much.